welcome to Off and Pacing on Tab Radio Racing and Sport. Tim Walker will be joined by Matt Young and Oliver County as they delve into the form for today's Pinjarra Harness Meeting, as well as an early look at tomorrow's meeting at Gloucester Park. We are Off and Pacing. Great to have your company on this Monday morning, the 10th of June, off and pacing. Tim Walker with you. Looking forward to another big half hour talking all things harness racing here in the West in the build-up to Pinjarra today and also Gloucester Park down here tomorrow night. Plenty to work through on the program this morning. Luke Edwards is going to be a special guest. Had a winner there on Friday night and a couple of chances over the next 48 hours we can have a bit of a chat to him about how the team is going along behind the scenes. And before we get to that, we've got our experts with us on the line, Ollie County and also Matt Young, to dissect what we learnt on Friday night and also an eye towards the next couple of days. Ollie, to you firstly, a very good morning. Good morning, Tim. Good morning, Matt. Great to be on. And Matt Young, a good morning to you once again. Good morning, boys, and good morning, everyone tuned in. Great to have you both with us today and looking forward to getting your take on what is going to come up over the next 24 to 48 hours. But as we always do, before we get stuck into what is coming up, we look back at what we have learned. So it was a rather eventful night of pacing down here at Gloucester Park. Clearly a little bit that is still to play out as well going forward. But we do look to get some horses to follow uh, to start things off. And, and Ollie, I might throw to you firstly, we, we just a, a word on the pure steel first and foremost, the, the feature event on the night. Paul Edward, uh, it was always potentially a race on paper where Dylan Edgerton Green uh, as trainer, he had a, a really good hand to play, obviously, with Hale St. Louis, who was terrific the week before. Paul Edward drawn on the back, and uh, it was the the less fancied of the two getting up. It was probably a bit surprising in the end that Paul Edward went around the odds he did. His trial leading in was so impressive. I think he ran 328 quarters on the way home his last 1,200 and showed he probably wasn't far off his absolute peak there. And then on Friday... The breeze horse just dropped off a little bit and Paul Edward really loomed and and won pretty softly in the end. So I think there's possibly more to come there with Paul Edward. There was a fair gap to third. So I don't think how St. Louis went Paul, but perhaps still had his chance out in front. And obviously uh, that we had the free-for-all on the night as well with Diego winning that. And uh, Matt, we spoke to Gemma Heyman on the Sports Daily earlier on. I wanted to touch on this with both yourself and Ollie. Ace Commander, to see Ace Commander back in the, the trotting race as a 10-year-old, the veteran. Uh, Gemma mentioned about how her and Ross were rather emotional after the win. This was one of the feel-good stories, not only of Friday night, but I reckon the last month or so in harness racing. Yeah, it's uh, it is a, it's a really good story um, when, and it's a story that a lot of people can sympathise empathise with because a lot of people that are listening to this show have been in that situation as either an owner trainer um, involvement with a horse that has had an injury and come back off of that. Um, it's it's incredibly rewarding and a yeah, sense of relief, I guess, to get them back to the track because. You never know if it's going to happen again. Um, there's a, it's a strong possibility that it will happen again, but just to be able to get the horse back to the track and a reward for effort and to see them be able to perform at their best again, it's just, yeah, it's a really rewarding, very emotional moment. And it's, uh, yeah, it's wonderful to see. So, yeah, I thought it was fantastic to see him back and he did he did thing, uh, win really well. So, He's a really smart trotter race commander and um, whatever he did on Friday night, he's going to bounce off that really well. So hopefully he's pulled up okay and we get to see him race again. And it's uh, it's always a great story when they come back off of such a hiatus and be able to get a victory. For anyone that missed that interview, I recommend getting on the podcast and listening to Gemma speak the way that she did about Ace Commander and certainly one uh, where Ross Oliveri was, was quite emotional as well as they, they did go past the post. It was fantastic to see Ace Commander back. All right, let's get into some horses to follow. So we'll let you open the bowling here, Ollie, and uh, tell us who you are taking out of Friday night's meeting. From race one on Friday, it was an impressive win, Prince of Pain, but a horse in behind Gully Gum hasn't seen the peg line yet in his four races back from a spell. But he's been really, really consistent and he looks to have come back from a spell really well. 
two back was really game in defeat behind Instigator and parked out again on Friday and they went 35-7 lead time which is pretty sharp going and he ended up just beating over a length so I think he's a horse to follow and he's going really well in race two McLarney got crossed early and sat off a really really hot tempo probably one of the strongest lead times in first quarters we've seen at Gloucester Park and he ended up having a top yeah the main division of the field and then he got shuffled back by Navy Street who was bound to tire in the end and still appeared to finish off reasonably well so I think from a similar draw McLarney can place at good odds for us so uh, if we can forgive that run on Friday and then in race eight abundance behind Ace Commander, it tends to be a pretty safe beginner, which counts for a lot with the Trotters on Friday, but begun really well, but wasn't able to find a prominent position up on the speed, ended up four back the pegs, and probably got a somewhat fortunate run through to end up leaders back on the turn, but looked to be bolting at the end, and if he got a run, I think he would have played a part in the finish, so he's one to follow as well. All right, so it was Gully Gum. McElhaney and Abundance as the horses to follow for Ollie and it just take note obviously last time out when we did speak to you two weeks ago Ollie you mentioned Little Happy Fellow who won that race on Friday night you referenced to the where there was the, the hot tempo on and you also mentioned Too Fast Too Serious and Quinton who gets an opportunity today now Matt the last time we spoke to you as horses to follow on this program you had Captain Bly, Rock and Roll Elliot and three rumours so that was an impressive win on Friday night Matt as we go to you yeah, she was, um, and was a much more controlled drive by Gary Hall Jr. in the breeze on three rumours, and he got the win there uh, half hour after the explosion in race number two. Um, yeah, look, I think from Friday night, what I saw on the program, I thought the first race, I sort of agreed in looking for a horse out of that race to follow, and I thought Rascal was one who was really impressive to my eye um, his last couple have been from bad draws and he was three wide pouring it on in that 35-7 lead time before restraining all the way back to the town. I know that he took shortcuts on the way home but he ducked and weaved and he hit the line pretty well and it can sometimes get caught up in the mix horse hitting the line well in 29-5 last quarter but for him to have been doing that work at the start and still being there at the finish I just like the way that he went about it. I think with a better draw, he's ready to win. Rascal is going quite well, and I think he would have gone reasonably close in that race if he was able to get to the breeze, but that wasn't to be. Hillview Bondi is one that they used his gate speed on Friday night. I thought that performance was really good. Uh, he was shoved three and then four wide coming towards the home turn, but he just fought it out quite nicely that last little bit. That was his second run into his preparation. He normally takes a few to get there. He's going to find a suitable race where he can be put into the event and we know how good Hillview Bondi can be so I just think he's getting closer and he could fly under the radar at his next start and run into the placings at some big odds and Abundance I agree with everything that Ollie just said I think Abundance is going really well and he looks to be a real genuine uh, or she looks to be a real genuine contender in any of the races she contends very soon because she's been stepping well and she is a horse that you sort of need to save her up unless she's racing over the short course, but uh, they, don't, they don't get too many opportunities about the trotters. So, yeah, I think Abundance is ready to win as well. So they're my three, Rascal, Hillview, Bondi and Abundance. All right, Rascal, Hillview, Bondi and Abundance for Matt. Ollie going with Gully Gum, McLarney and also Abundance. Now, let's turn our attention to this week and what we've got to look forward to in the early part of it of course Pinjarra today GP tomorrow night and Ollie you're going to start us off with Pinjarra today you're going towards the middle and back half of the program starting off in race five starting off yeah we watch me wave who since returning from a spell has been really really consistent was able to return with a win and four, five starts since is run top four, so this horse going really well, showed really good gate speed on Tuesday to quite easily hold the lead and then somewhat surprisingly handed over the top and it ended up just a moderately run race and couldn't quite get over the top in the end. I think she can use her gate speed again to cross the average beginner in spirit of an angel and then from there just I think we'll get handed the top by 
Radiant Bay, who looks the likely leader initially, and then from there, Watch Me Wave can control, and I think can probably get away with it on the front. In race six, a horse I've been following for a while, Kin Sabi, always been a horse I've had a bit of time for, was able to break through for a well-deserved win three back. While it wasn't overly pr- impressive to the eye, it's always pretty difficult to make ground wide on the track at Calabaran. So I thought that was quite a nice win. It was good again, two back, running on late, but just got too far out of his ground. And then last start, it all went wrong when doing too much work in the run. The senior driver goes on in Trent Wheeler, which I'm hoping we'll see him position up behind the leader this time instead of three back the fence. I think he looks a really strong place chance behind Quinton, as you mentioned, Tim. Looks a really good race for him today. It's hard to see how he's beaten. In race nine, Cab Sav found herself in two extremely strong races. Her last two, holy heck, a two back, who's quite a nice horse. And she drew poorly and never really got into it. And then last start, she raced up on the speed in another really strong race. Finished off just okay, but they did go a 56-8 middle half. So I thought it was just too too strong a middle half and she was entitled to tie late and and she did, but she gets back to Phillies and Mayor's company here. She gets the draw advantage on her key rivals and I think she's got the gate speed to lead and lead for a long way in this race. All right, so race five, watch me wave. And uh, Matt, just listening to you in the background there, Ollie's braver than you. Oh, I just, yeah. Look, I like the horse, and I've mentioned many on many a time now, but yeah, she's got me a few times watching me wave. So I do fully expect her to come out and win today. So I hope Ollie bets up and gets the victory, and I hope for the connections they get the victory too. But she's just been one that I haven't been able to catch. So um, hopefully me not tipping her today is... I'm the jinx that uh, helps her get the victory. All right. Uh, you mentioned Kinsabi and Quinton there. Quinton, obviously, very hard to beat, but Ollie there mentioning uh, maybe a little little Quinella play there, Ollie. That could be the way to go, Kinsabi and, and Quinton in race six. Definitely. I think they do look the main two chances. Kinsabi went up huge play odds, but it's been one that's that's got some backing early. So I think uh, Quinton and Kinsabi looked the the top two chances in that race. And then if Kinsabi could hold leaders back, it could be pegs, pegs, pegs with bank notice possibly also filling a minor placing. And Cabs have in the last. All right, Matt. Now you're going to go to the early part of the program. You forecast one of these as the best for our listeners to take you on on the sports daily, but you're going to start off in the Trotters race, race number two on the program this afternoon. Yeah, I can understand the money coming for Saloon here, but I was pretty keen on a uh, dream big aim high. I think uh, we've seen this horse step quite well. And I think it's just a battle at the start, who gets the better beginning. And I think if dream big aim high gets the better beginning, I could see Bruce Stanley driving pretty positively in this event. And from there, I think can work forward and potentially get to the top. But even if uh, this horse doesn't get to the lead, it's not the be all end all. Um, I think he's going well enough to win from back in the field and, yeah, I just I like the way he's been held up in a few races with plenty to offer against, I would say, stronger fields. So happy to be with Dream Big Game High in race two. The third race, El Jado, I just, I like the trial. I like the way this horse closed off in the trial. It was only the first look in a trial too. So that is the only concern, but showed gates. They took the cover, hit the line really nicely, just ticked a lot of boxes for me. So thought El Jado on the third was the way to go there. And hijacks, I really liked him in the fourth race. Uh, he had a torrid run last start, and he powered home after being held up uh, at various points in the last lap, after being three wide for a portion of the first lap. He's going to run a really good race here, hijacks, and I think he can get the job done. So he was my best of those. But, yeah, hopefully races two, three, and four are all profitable, and then we can just roll into Ollie's and double down, triple down, and walk away with a pocket full. All right, that'd be very, very nice. So dream big, aim high in race two. El Jado in race three. Hijacks, of course, was the one that Matt circled on the Sports Daily earlier on this morning and into Ollie's Watch Me Wave in race five. Kinsabi, Quinton, obviously expecting a, a pegs affair there in race number six, and, and Cab Sav in the last. So that takes us to Gloucester Park tomorrow night. We've got 
eight races on the program as opposed to a couple of the nine and ten eventers we've been looking at of late. And we'll get to you here first, Matt, because you're going to go in race number two for the first of yours. And on paper, it looks a relatively even affair. It is an even affair. And I went with a horse coming out of trials that I thought has been rather impressive. And I'm just hoping that uh, he can blast to the top here in Long Reach Bay. Here comes Sharky, who's a bit better on Friday night. Shahadi's been just going okay. Pivotal, they're all okay beginners, and I think Long Reach Bay could ping them at the start, and if it does, I think uh, he could set himself up for a victory here. So I like how he's improved from his first to second trial into a race, looks suitable. He's got good gait speed. He's also become uh, rather talented in the way of being able to blast the arm and then relax. So I think uh, Long Reach Bay can return a winner tomorrow night, race two, number four, and then down the page to the last race, I think it was. It yes. is Jackie Daniels each way, I thought, was just a free hit at them. I think Escape from Reality, like most, will look the likely leader in the event. And um, it just goes up in grade, and I think Jackie Daniels proved last start that She's getting back to a better form. She was second at Bunbury. It was wind-assisted very much, that 26-9 down the back, but she was only beaten 11 metres to Ideal Muscle, who'd be at prohibitive odds in this race. And Ideal Muscle from the stables of Aidan De Campo, I think would be held in a much higher regard than Escape from Reality. So I'm, I'm hoping that Jackie Daniels can get through into a good spot and be able to stop them late. So race eight, number 10, and race two, number four. All right, that is for Matt. Now, Ollie, you're also going to race two. Are you taking Matt on, or are you lining up with him? In race two, I could totally agree with Matt's thoughts. thought the two trials from this horse were really impressive. First trial, obviously, behind Paul Edward, who, as we said, returned nicely on Friday with a win, and then sat parked and was beaten by Smokey Shadow, not far at all, home 56 seconds, which is pretty sharp time and should benefit fitness-wise from those two trials. And as Matt said, if he can blast over at the start and lead them up in this field, I think he'd take plenty of catching. And then in race five, got a good war hole. Cops a very average draw over the short course, which seemingly makes it a pretty difficult task for him here. But I think he's going so well. He can overcome this draw and we might just get a... As a result, three back, he, from gate nine, he got to near last in the race and ended up finishing second to Trireal Brigade, who is going quite nicely as well, and he made up a lot of ground there. Last start, he was held up on the pegs before hitting line pretty well again. He, he'll definitely need the tempo on in this race, but if the tempo is on, I think got a good war hole, looks a great each-way chance, and he can, he can be hitting the line strongest there. All right, so Long Reach Bay, unanimous uh, for our experts today, Ollie and Matt. Ollie also with got a good war hole in race five as a nice little each way play, and Jackie Daniels as well there for Matt in race number eight off the back line. All right, now, Ollie, thank you for your time this morning. We do appreciate it. We'll look forward to catching up with you again next week, and we'll hear from you as well on Talking Trots on the podcast on a Thursday evening when it does drop. Thanks very much, Tim. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. There is Ollie County. And Matt, will have you as well on the uh, Trots WA X page a little later on today there at Pinjarra and again here tomorrow night at Gloucester Park. Absolutely right, Tim. See you later. Hopefully there is plenty of winners for yourself there and you can find a few winners for our listeners as well. That is Ollie County and also Matt Young. We'll take a very short break here on Off and Pacing. When we come back, we will have a chat to Luke Edwards, get a little bit of an idea as to how his team's going ahead of a few interesting chances over the next 48 hours. True skill is easy to see if you know where to look. Steel blue boots are made with premium materials and technology, designed for all-day comfort and durability. Steel blue, a mark of true skill. Looking for a new CPAP machine? Western CPAP is your discount warehouse for all your CPAP supplies. Amazing deals? We have all the big brands under one roof. You won't find better deals anywhere else. Free delivery on all orders over $300. westerncpap.com.au Hello, I'm Giulio Santarelli inviting you to join me on our social media channel, The Races WA. We cover all major meetings at Ascot and Belmont, as well as major country races across WA. 
We'll give you a snapshot of the day's proceedings and talk to all the major players and get the final word from jockeys and trainers. If you can't make it to the races, join me on Twitter or Facebook, The Races WA. You are listening to Often Pacing on Tab Radio Racing and Sport. It's great to have your company on this Monday morning. We get towards the back end of Often Pacing and we're about to catch up with Luke Edwards who enjoyed success on Friday night down here at Gloucester Park with better class, had a couple of starts under Luke's care now and getting the result there on Friday. Luke, good morning to you and well done. Morning, Timmy. How are we going? Going very, very nicely. I'm sure you are as well. On the way down to Pinjarra, off the back of a, a good result there on Friday. Yeah, off nice and early this morning off to the races. But, um, yeah, no, it was good to get a win on Friday night. It was in, you know, running a lot of places lately, and it, just, uh, it was nice to finally get one over the line. And I actually said to the missus, um, I wasn't going to get my hair cut until I got a winner, and it was getting pretty long. And uh, my mum's 60th on Sunday night, so lucky... Just in time, I got it. Sort of got it. Got one Saturday morning after the win on Friday. Yeah, well, well, just give us a bit of an insight in, in regards to how those conversations go down. Is it Luke? You need to hurry up and and get this haircut. We're not copying this this length much more. No, nah, no. It was just um, it was just the uh, the fact that I've seen so close to winning races, but yeah. running running nice places, and yeah. um, I just said, yeah, I'll, I'll get it cut after I have a winner as a bit of a as, as a bit of a joke, and then. Um, yeah, mum's birthday, obviously, there was going to be a few photos taken and stuff like that. And I said to her, I, I might have to get a cut before mum's birthday. And she said, oh, you better you better win it on Friday night. And then, uh, yeah, the horse, horse got over the line, so it all worked out for three. Yeah, it certainly did. Hey, tell us, obviously, Ryan, in the parade ring, he was rather confident. So you'd given him a, a little bit of confidence going into uh, Friday night, obviously, with a, with a nice enough draw as well and, and getting a good run throughout. Were you pretty confident going in? I was like the horse. The horse looks good. Um, he's just got a little bit of a funny gait, and when I drove him the other night, I'm probably probably hold on to him a bit. And uh, Ryan's not scared to cut the reins on the bus seat and let him go and do his thing. So um, yeah, Ryan was confident that he led him to win, and um, I was confident on his work. His work on the Wednesday was really good, and, and it's just if he did everything right, that he'd get over the line. So that uh, worked out good. He got a good run and finished off the race with himself. Absolutely, and obviously had a couple of starts with you now. You had to go back to the trials after the run in the middle of last month, but has it been relatively smooth sailing under your care other than that? I actually bought, bought him six months ago, and um, I kept him in work. He was racing, and um, just wasn't quite happy with him for the same reason. He felt, felt a bit sore and a bit not, not happy, so we, we chucked him out for a spell, and since he's come back, it's been pretty smooth sailing, yeah, so... Just bit of time off. He was probably probably ready for it. So anyway, when I bought him, and um, a bit of a long process to get our money back. But um, yeah, no, we're, we're working our way towards that. Absolutely. And so, why don't we go to tomorrow night? Then we're on the quick spin. So clearly, come through Friday night, will? Yeah, it was just uh, the opportunity to stay in that same grade. Um, obviously, you wouldn't be eligible. Um, but the field's already out, so it's sort of a, a bit of a free hit for him, and it's the same grade. So, yeah, I jumped in this morning, and he was nice and bright, and he should run a good race tomorrow as well. Yeah, how did you see it playing out from the draw there? I'd love to see it in front, but, yeah, we just have to see what what happens, and um, I'll just leave it up to Ryan and say he wants to drive him. He's, he's pretty fast off the arm, and he's probably faster out wide, to be honest, and, and cramped up on the inside, so... Um, yeah, he got out good enough on Friday night, but yeah, the first time Ryan drove the King Jerry, he flew out, so um, and that was a bit wider, so you just see how he gets out, and I'll leave it up to Ryan, but he's pretty versatile sort of horse, but out in front would be nice. Yeah, absolutely. That So that's that's probably plan A, that was going to be the next question, to try and, and get to the front, that'd be that'd be the ideal spot, clearly? I'll just leave it up to Ryan, how he, how he feels in the warm-up and on the gate, but um, he can drive him how he wants, but I'd, I'd say that's the way he was thinking. Unless he comes to me with a different plan, that's um, pretty racing. We have a chat about it, but I'll just leave him up to him. That's what he gets paid for. All right, that's uh, that's better <laughs> class in, in race number six there tomorrow night. Over to you, Ryan Warwick. Now let's go back a race earlier. We'll tidy up these ones on Tuesday night before we get to today. So don't go in the water. Returned off a, a long time off last week. How did he come through? Yeah, needed the run. Um, trial really good, his first trial, like really, really good. 
Uh, and then his second trial wasn't as good and, you know, maybe he's probably just, you know, those, those second up syndrome sort of thing. So um, just using his first run as a bit of a guide and he felt good but blew out late in condition and probably benefited a lot from the run and he might need a few more but it's only a mile on Tuesday. So um, good draw and... Yeah, he'll go a lot better on the rail, that's for sure. Absolutely. So how did you see it playing out at the start there as well for, for Don't Go in the Water tomorrow night from that good draw you mentioned? Yeah, he's, he's pretty quick. Um, you know, he probably doesn't have the form on the board to get a bit of respect, so he might pop a bit of heat early. Like, I'd love to lead the race, but if everyone else wants to get involved, we might have to be a bit some but I'd love to see him out in front. Um, he's probably running stress race out in front. He's, you know, pretty good awesome sitting out in front, but... Um, like I said, condition-wise and runs on the board mean a lot. So leading is one thing, but leading if you're going to top pressure and that, you know, it's going to, Ryan's going to have to lay that one up out there on, on the night as well. All right, and the last of them is Shahadi. Now, we just spoke to the boys uh, in Ollie and Matt. They were both keen on Longreach Bay and a, a race whereby you could probably make a case for five or six. It, it does look to be an even field on paper. Shahadi's got a relatively good draw there tomorrow night. Barrier number two, can we see her uh, get a, a win on the board here or, or at least run into the money somewhere? Yeah, I'm really, really happy with her. She, last month she had, she, she was on the quick back up. Um, she raced the Friday and the Saturday night um, and she blew an absence in her back foot. And um, so, yeah, a bit of time away from her last race, but she's really been thriving at home and she's found her way into a, into a like you said, an even field here. So, um, look, I reckon she's always the sort of horse when she can hold the close enough on the rail and she's always a sniper chance. So she, she relies on racing luck, but I'm really happy with her and I actually think she's hit the line really hard tomorrow night. Okay, and you're on your way down to Pinjarra? Luke, so today it's okay to be grey. Your lone representative is it the day for it's okay to be grey? Well, I think he wants to get married today, the bridesmaid. So <laughs> no, of course that's good. He's um he's been married. He's been married. He's been he's been running seconds to nine horses. You know, Raja Ross and Prince of Pain and you know Slouches. So um, hopefully today he doesn't find one better, and uh, you know, he can run a really good day. Fantastic. Well, Luke, all the very best. Safe travels down there and good luck tomorrow night here as well at Gloucester Park. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks, Jimmy. Cheers, mate. There is Luke Edwards with us off the back of the win of Better Class on Friday night and looking ahead towards this afternoon at Pinjarra and tomorrow night right here at Gloucester Park. That's us done for off and pacing. Half an hour gone very, very quick there. I'm going to hand you over to Leia Ernest for the first part of race day. Hopefully there is plenty of winners for you over the course of the next 24 to 48 hours from a harness racing point of view. Thanks for your company this morning. Have a great week. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelpline.org.au.